Well, you guys have seen most of these words, if not all these words. I'm going to give you like a sketchy, if you will, interpretation of these vocabulary words. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw them. I'm not necessarily going to write them out. I can, I can tell you what they are word for word. So if you're going to do this, I prefer that like you would do it on the back of this paper. Uh, just a good place for all this stuff to be in one part. Uh, no, because you're supposed to glue that into your spiral. If you're not gluing it into your spiral, you can use it on there too. I don't care. Uh, so radius, any questions what radius is or what it looks like? Can you describe radius to me? Can you do the sign? Right now. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> yes. It's like halfway. No. Is it the, is it's it, like going across the circle, like a half. half? No. No, the, the length is um, like, it's like the, the angle of the circle. I'll take it. Half of the circumference. Yes, but I, I want you guys to know that it's center to edge. Center to edge. So if I told you center to edge, you could draw a circle and go from the center to the edge and know that's the radius. Yeah, so if I if you said diameter, you would draw a circle. Edge to edge. And it would go edge to edge, but it has to go through the center. The center yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, I know that one. So diameters look like pokeballs, if you will. Um, it has to go through the center. The book definition is a cord that goes through the center of the circle. What? A cord. That's why I don't say that. So what is a cord? A Not a chord. It's edge to edge, but it doesn't have to be a line that goes through. No. Absolutely not a is it, line. Is it the dot in the middle? No. Here's what a chord looks like. Is that not what I said? It, no, it's not. That is a line segment inside of a circle. Oh. Oh, we're using him. So it doesn't matter like how it looks. It's just a line segment. So why would you say that for your visual? So we're using center to edge. That's a line segment. Yeah. Edge to edge through the center. Right? Line segment in the circle. The reason I say line segment is because a secant looks like that. A secant is a line through a circle. A chord is a line segment in a circle. I'm just trying to expose you to it. So a chord is when the line doesn't go outside. Correct. Now, I could get super nerdy on you. Or no, no. Don't nerd out on me. No, nerd out on me. So, I want to be smart. every secant has a chord, right? This is the chord of that secant. So, and then every chord, every diameter is a chord, but not every chord is a diameter. A chord is only a diameter when it goes to the circle, the center of the circle. Yeah, you, 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 sure, Baker. Move I on. I got what you said. You said sure. So, uh, if if I drew this and made this the center of the circle, it would be a, a diameter, but it's, not. but it's not. So, like, it just it's like every square is a rectangle, and every rectangle is a square. That's where we're getting in. So, as long as you know what they look like, you should be good for the matching on the quiz. Matching on your open notes quiz. Right? Next this on Friday, you walk by Irvin Walker, he goes like this. You can see it right there. Okay, and then tangent. This tangent, thank God, has nothing to do with the last tangent we just looked at. Thank you. So we won't do the calculator inside. No. Alright. <laughs> so it's a completely different tangent. Here's what tangent looks like. Line. So it's a line that touches a circle in one point. No, just anywhere. anywhere. So it's basically a diameter, but the line keeps going through the circle. So <laughs> let's say my head was a circle. Right? This, if I put a ruler through my head, would be a secant. Secant. See, you can't say it? Secant. Right? Now, if it was a tangent, I'm going to touch my head at one point. Top of the head, side of the head, whatever. It's just a line that rolls around the outside of the circle. 
That's a, that's a tangent. Not like a dark gentleman, but a tangent. About a chord? A chord, right? A chord is a pretty much everyone's first card back right when I was growing up. There you go. Yeah. Just drawing small things. Now, we're getting over here today, right? Arc, minor arc, major arc, semicircle. That's where we're really going to spend a lot of time in class today. You know what I mean? When I say a lot, I'm not, not very much. Okay. So, what is an arc? <laughs> yeah. So, everyone goes like this. Yeah, I don't want to do that. What? But what is it? A curved arc, like a curve. A curved line. Think like when you shoot a basketball. It doesn't make any line. Uh, part of the circle. You like anything written down, bro? Part, part of I told you right on the back of that one. No, there. Ooh. So an arc is just part of the circle. So then I can classify my arcs as baby arc. Should I do that? Yeah, no. Okay, baby <laughs> arcs, minor arcs. What's a baby shark? Small one. So a baby arc is any arc Small part of the circle. less than 180 degrees. Or AKA less than half of the circle. Because 180 is half of a 360 degree circle. So daddy shark, major arc. More than 180. More than 180. Not trying to impose any copyright infringement. So put that on there. So in case somebody tags me on YouTube. And then semicircle. Exactly 180 or exactly half. Cool? Yeah. So we're going to look at arcs, minor arcs, major arcs, semicircles. Um, so I, let me keep with this sketchy part of this. Minor arc, major arc, semicircle. Okay. So it's part of a circle, right? So anything less than half, anything more than half, and exactly half. So we're going to kind of play the matching game. You ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, with this? Yeah, now we're actually going to do the matching game. So, um, small hints, life hacks. Those three go down there. That, that gives you kind of a better idea of what's going on. So, I did this with first period. I'll do this with you guys. Um, line segment DC is right here. And then... Line TG is right here, and line segment OE is right here, and line segment AB is right here. Does that, does that make it look like super obvious now? Okay. That just like makes it more clear. Makes it clear, right? So where do you want to start? Purple, red, yellow? Red. Red. Tangent. Red is tangent. It's a line that touches the circle at one point. Red is tangent, so six is A. Six is B. <laughs> what? What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah, yeah. That's it's really confusing for me. That's why I made it color coordinated. Six is B or red. And then we have I was, I just drew C, uh, Yellow is radius. Okay. Yes, so C is radius. A is four. Okay. Four is A. Four is pink? Yes. Four is pink or cord. Did you didn't do pink? We didn't do D. Blue. Diameter is D blue. Diameter is D. So then we have one and two. Which one is concentric circles and which one is congruent circles? E is number one and F. I mean, F is number one and two is the mm. So congruent circles are same size, same shape. Uh, concentric circles are 
two circles that share the same center. Concentric circles, like bullseyes. All right. Again, down here, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, watch when I do this. Arc, R, Q. When you mark an arc, you go from R to Q. So, G is blue. I'm going to mark an arc from P to R to Q. P, R, Q, it's pink. And I'm going to mark an arc in red, maybe, P to Q to R, P to Q to R. So is blue or G major, minor, or semi? Minor. Pink, major, or semi? Any. And then pink, major or major? <coughs> major. Major. There you go. How do you feel about that? So, so the first day always is, isn't it? No. So then done. Yeah. All right. So flip to your actual notes now. We're gonna fill in the blanks here. <clears throat> the blank is the measure of the outside edge of a circle. Circumference. Circumference. Do you know who invented circumference? Circumference. So <laughs> not King Arthur's knights. You know who invented the knights at the round table? Circumference, because it was a circular table, and they all sat around the outside. Get it? Sir, like S I R circumference. Okay. So sections of the circumference are called arcs. Uh, now we've talked about arcs. I've given you guys arcs that are already described, but I haven't asked you the. If so, like what game? What do you what do you call? Is this in that picture? Line segment AB. No. 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 Minor arc AB. But but it's a line. Of but, but it's a it's so arc. What's the arc? There's so line segment AB is right here. Is that what I'm looking for? No, it's a. Uh, so, I, when we write this stuff, it has to be arc AB. All right, it has to be arc AB. So, that's how you're going to write it today. Now, you'll see on the next page it says there is a difference between, we're looking at the example section or the name section right here. All minor arcs must be named by two letters. All right, so if I said to describe to me arc AB, you're like, okay, I hear two letters. That should be a baby arc because it has two letters. Uh, it's a minor arc. It's a minor arc. So I don't want you guys to say arc AB and do this. That's not right. That's a major arc, not a minor arc. Right. So all your minor arcs have to be shortest distance. AB. And here's why. Here's what's going to make it make sense. Where is arc AC? From A to my circle. Well, arc AC, is that this one? Or is that this one? It's kind of the same. But it goes to B. Who cares? I care. It said arc AC. But you said the last one kind of goes to B. Because it's a minor arc. So all semicircles have to be at least three letters because it needs to denote uh, direction. So if I said semicircle AC, it would have to be this one, ABC. So you have to name it ABC so you know which direction you're going to go. Semicircles have to have three letters. Right? Look, 
Semicircles are named by three points. Major arcs are named by three points. End points. So if I was going to name a major arc on there, I could name major arc ACB. And it says you go from A to C and back to B. So it's everything but this chunk right here. Just kind of getting like the, the rhythm down, right? And you're going to have to name some arcs, and you're going to have to like describe some arc measurements today. So there's the first test. Just like your homework looks, it says here's a picture. Name two minor arcs. Minor, so arc, QR. 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 Arc, QR. And arc, QR. Arc, Everybody all day today, those are all their arcs they're naming. Arc QT. Yeah. Arc QT is a minor arc. Arc QU is a minor arc. Arc RS is a minor arc. Arc ST is a minor arc. That's the one we wrote up there. What about R is RS? Arc RS is a not a minor arc. Yes, it is a minor arc. Yes. Okay, anything smaller than half the circle is a minor arc. Now major arcs, you have to use three letters. Here's what I do for major arcs. Okay. Okay. Let me get back to. Here's how Baker does it. Okay. I say I want to go. I want my arc to start at R and end at Q. And I want it to be a major arc. So I just pick up one letter in between them. It doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm gonna pick up T. So that's R T Q arc. R T Q. You can put it under the umbrella if you're watching that right now. And you can put arc S U R. Arc S U R would be also a major arc. That would go here to here, more than half the circle. Now, semicircles are a little more complicated because it has to be exactly half the circle. So it would be SU. So, what? SU. Wait, wait, wait. Half the circle. Oh. It's a quarter of the circle. Z kind of right? QUF. So I, I like to say that from here to here is half the circle, and you can name whichever way you want to go, right or left. So arc QUS is half the circle. Can we do it like QRS? And the other semicircle is arc QRS. There's also the one that connects R and T. So like RQT and TSR are also semicircles. That's the first part of your homework. They're pretty simple. Name the arcs. Uh, now I'm about to throw some math at you. Are you ready? Can you handle oh, this? Math. Are you ready for this jelly? Yeah. Are you ready for this? How do you put math in this? <laughs> uh, yeah. What? What do you mean? No. It says this pizza pizza is 103 degrees. How big is this pizza pizza? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So this line has a very specific name, diameter. diameter. And diameters cut circles in half. Uh, okay, okay. So how big is half a circle? So if this piece of pizza is 90, how big is this piece of pizza? Now all you got to do is just math by parts. It says, how big is arc WX? 90. Does it get harder than this? Not today. X, Y. It's always the first day. This is easy. And here comes the test. Like, uh. What's up, say? Does it get harder than this? Yeah, because tomorrow we're going to find the link, the numerical measure from WX. It's just it's cross multiplying salt. Okay, WY is how many degrees? 190 degrees. What? 
No, that's a major arc, more than 180. Oh, can't do that. Wrong direction. Oh, whoa. that's an idea. Because it's a baby arc, it has to be less than 180. Now we get to the major arcs, the big arcs. What? You still confused on that one? So if I went this way, it'd be 193 degrees. That's more than half the circle. It's a major arc. Can't do that. I went here. I went from W to Y. Which is 167, yeah, yeah. which is less than half. You can skip letters. Okay. Yeah. Y, I'm, I'm Z, W. Yes. One I have a question for the next one. Yes. Does it have to follow the pattern? Yes, it does. Okay. It has to go from X to Z and then to Y. Uh -huh. How are you thinking about doing it? Like this, John? X to Z and back to Y? Yeah, I'll think about that. No, too much. Logan Reeves, people. X to Z to Y would be 180 plus 103 or 283. And then ZWX. All right, so this is the last part that's that is not new, but I'm asking you to speak in a different language right now. Okay. Yeah, pi, pi by pi. Right? No, it's pi. No, it's pi. It's pi. It's pi. It's pi. We're not doing 3.14159263. We're not doing that. Keep going, Baker. Keep going, Baker. 3.14159263589783283846262. You like the things from the 90s? Okay. So. For this one, I'm asking you guys to speak in terms of pi. Do not multiply by pi. All your answers are in terms of pi. So there's two different equations. 2 pi r is circumference, and pi d is circumference. So let's say that r equals 4. What is your circumference? Circumference is equal to 2 times pi times 4. That's it. Your answer, your circumference is 8 pi. Oh, so you just multiply like this. Do not multiply by pi. No. So, pi is so skip be pi. Either. It's just going to be cool. this. Pi is a number. We're just choosing not to multiply by it. Like 8x plus 8x is 16x's. I'm confused on the two C's. Like, why is it like this? Uh, or circumference is pi d. Is so what if your diameter was 10? It would be circumference equals pi times 10. So depending on what the problem gives you, if it gives you radius, use 2 pi r. If it gives you diameter, use pi d. What if you write it like the second part? What if you wrote c equals pi d? That would be like, hey, act it seems zero. Like you're just weird saying it backwards. It's just weird. It's not wrong, but it's weird. Weird. Okay, this is what the first step is tomorrow. The first step. Language. Hopefully. Now, I'm going to take a step back for a second. No one actually ever took time to tell me how to write pi. I mean, how like it's like line with, it's like so there's a lot of different people. Some people do a J. Some people do straight line, straight line, straight line. I just do whatever comes to me. 
I like to do like the Spanish tilted. Yeah. yeah. That just looks cooler to me. It looks better. All right, I take pride in my pies. I the one. That's a good one. That's I, I try to strive for this. I do like a mix between the second. It depends on how fast I'm writing, what it looks like. Okay. Um, so here we go. Um, everyone has gotten this wrong all day. I don't know why. So leave your answer in terms of pi. What do you have? An R or a D? Six pi. R. An R. So I'm going to use circumference equals two pi R. What is your R? Three. Circumference equals two. Pi three six pi. Six. And you're wrong. Right. You got you. It's five pi. No. What? What, what? what the hell? Fuck <laughs> out. I was guessing. How's that wrong? Six times. Oh, three. Oh, six. Nope. Do we just switch? Pi six. I'm confused. Like, no, it's like times three point something, okay? No, Six the answer is... Yes, Carson. Uh, oh, my God. Wait, he said feet. He said feet. Six feet. Wrong. Six pi feet? It's six pi feet, which is like 18-ish feet. 18-ish feet. You have to know what the unit is, right? It's inches, meters, feet, unicorns, whatever it is, you have to list it. It's weird. The reason I say that is because some sadistic teachers will put like five and a half feet or five feet six inches. That's annoying. And you'll put 5.6. And you'll get it wrong because 5.6 is like five feet six and a half inches. Five feet seven inches, right? Make sure you use your units, right? Where we're going in this is all going to be units. I'm just glad this doesn't record video. All right. Your diameter is 9, nine five inches. inches. So we have a diameter. C equals pi 9. C equals 9 pi inches. Nailed it. On it now. This is, this is, guys, you don't know why this is so amazing, and I'm going to show you in, in two more problems, okay? Oh, no, I have a question, I have a question. If we get a radius, that should not have my signal. Oh, you can't answer a stupid question. No, no. Let me think about it. Like, it, you could be the guy that was like, you know what, I don't like radius, I want to work with, with diameter. Yeah. And you could say, I know the diameter is 7. Yeah. Whatever you want, works. it still works. Seven pi meters. All right, then. Put. <laughs> seven pi <laughs> meters. You forgot to put C equals seven. I mean, so That's really, C equals pi D, and you said that the diameter was seven. Okay. Circumference equals that. So this is why this is so awesome. And the last one for the day. Okay, now, it's, read it. The wheel of a car is shown at the right. How far does the hub cap of the tire travel in one complete rotation? How far does the tire itself travel in one complete rotation? So I'm asking, when my tire goes from here well, to here, how many inches around does the hubcap travel versus how many inches around does the tire travel? I'm asking you to find the circumference of the hubcap and find the circumference of the tire. Yes, they both travel one full rotation. Area of a circle. We'll do that next week. That'll be the first area we do all year long in geometry. So we're trying to figure out what is the circumference of the hubcap. Okay. Circumference equals two pi six pi uh, three six pi in cube. Cool. Now be careful. A radius is described as the center of the circle to the outside of the circle.
What's the radius of the wheel? 11 inches. 11 inches, not 8. So it'd be 20. Yeah, 22 by inches. 22. Now, what is the difference between the circumference of the tire and the circumference of the hubcap? Can you subtract it? Subtract it, yeah. 22 pies minus 6 pies. 16. 16 <coughs> pies. Inches. Now let me nerd out real quick. Like, when would I ever gonna use this in my life? There's a guy that is a multi-millionaire because of this concept here. No, and we still use it every day. You ready? So yeah. in Texas, all these guys want to jack their trucks up in the air and put big ass tires on them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, here's what happens. They put these big old tires on their trucks. And you're cruising along the road, your speedometer says 70, you get pulled over, said, bro, you were doing 80. Huh? That's why. Your tires are too big. Right, my tires are too big. So my tires calculating that usually I go 100 inches in one full revolution. I just put this bigger tire on there. So now I'm going 140 inches in one full revolution. So I'm traveling farther per one revolution. So I'm actually going farther than what my speedometer says. So if I travel 60 miles an hour on my speedometer for an hour, I went 60 miles. If I put these big old tires on there, I'm going 60 miles an hour for an hour. I'm actually going 70 miles farther. They're like, well, my gas mileage sucks. It doesn't. You're going 10 miles extra per hour. That should calculate in your miles per gallon. Why did you tell me in the future? So homeboy said, watch this. Homeboy. And he like made a program that will fix your speedometer using the circumference. And he said, yeah, a little bit of computer, a little bit of math, and he made millions of dollars. Millions of dollars by plugging in your car and saying, boop, boop, let me fix your, everyone cared about miles per gallon. They didn't really care about their speedometer. Crazy, right? Not yet. So what you're telling me in the future is I should spend like $2,000 on the straight big old tires. But why? So, so I can get around faster. No, it says that you're going, you're, you're going faster. I'm saving than more gas mileage. You're wasting gas mileage. Oh, it says that you're going like, it says your gas mileage is getting worse. It says it's getting worse, but it's actually staying the same. So everything hasn't changed. Your computer doesn't know how to manipulate the larger tire you put on there. Uh, no, it's just the computer's fault.